On this video, we're going to start to talk about atomic actions. So we talked about the fact that atomic actions are the building blocks of workflows. But how do you actually create an atomic action? So I'm going to walk you through a simple atomic action that will call out a Postman echo and just echo the response back to us. So Postman has this great service that is just to you throw something at it and it will kind of repeat it back to you. So let's see how we would build this atomic action within uh, the orchestrator here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new workflow, just like we've done in, in the past. And I'm going to go down to a web service. So it's an HTTP request. Everyone's familiar with HTTP. It's the typical request you would make in your web browser. It's no different here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this Postman Echo. And so the web server is called Postman Echo. And in the actual workflow, I'm also going to call this Postman Echo. So the workflow is called Postman Echo, and the web service is called Postman Echo. And what it's asking me for is a relative URL. So if I go in here to the Postman site, I can see that it's asking, it's telling me that postman echo.com slash get is the parameter that I will need here. So if I go back to AO, I can put, it's just asking me for the relative URL. So it's slash get. So I'm gonna to need to specify that URL that is postman echo. So what we're gonna do is go to the target and I've pre-created a target here and I'm gonna make sure that it is under HTTP. So we gotta to go to HTTP endpoint. And there's a target here that says Postman Echo. So what I did is I just put that URL in there. And when you look at targets, we have another video on targets, so you can look at that. It's a little out of scope for here. But basically, all I did, if you're looking here, is I put the postman-echo.com into there. So now we have postman.echo.com. We can use the workflow target. And I have slash get, which is the relative URL. But you also need to put what you want to echo back. So I'm just going to put test, and, and I'll put a and test2. So I'll have two things that echo back. I'll have the word test and the word test2, and this is going to be a get. So let's take a look. So now if I validate, because you always have to validate first, and then run, what you'll see is a, that it's green here. And if I click on this item, I can see the actual run and the input and output of this item. So you'll see at the bottom here, it has a thing called args, and this is all in JSON format. And it has test and test2 that it returns back to me. But I don't want all this other stuff here. So let me just edit this again. And what I'll do is a JSON path query. So JSON path allows me to pick a certain path that I want to return back. So I have to pick the last item, which was the Postman Echo, as the source JSON to query. So I'll click on the little puzzle piece here. I'll go to Activities, Postman Echo, and I'll say, look at the body of that. And then what do I want to see there? So in JSON Path Query, what I want to see is the start, which is dollar sign dot args. And the property name, I'll just name as args. So now if I validate this, whoops, I must have forgot something here. Let's see, what did I forget? So I have the strings, I have the JSON path query, I have dollar sign dot args, I have args, and let's just hit validate. Okay, so it works this time. So let's hit run, and let's run through this again. And now if I go down to the JSON path query uh, action, if I go to the bottom, what you'll see is that I just have test and test two. Well, to make this object reusable, what I might wanna do is if I click on an empty spot here, I may want to go down and add a variable. And this variable, what I'll ask for is the args. This way, every time it can prompt us for some kind of args that we want, and it has to be required, so we'll say required. And what I'll do is I'll replace this Postman echo the test and test2 with the workflow input args. And this way, it'll prompt the user for the args, and it'll be able to pass it back. So let's run this again. Now it's asking me for these arguments, so I'll say 1 and 2, just to make it a little bit different. I'll say run. 
And what you'll notice is that it now gave me in that JSON path, query, JSON path query a one and a two. So what it did is it prompted the user, it passed it out to the web service for Postman Echo, and then it did a JSON path query for just the args, and it passed back those same arguments. Now to make this reusable, what we want to do is also set a output variable that can be used. So what I'm going to do is set a variable, and I'll have to create another variable here within uh, the variables, and this time I'll call it um, string, and I'll call it out args. So we know it's output args, and I'll make it type output, and I'll save that. And now I got to hook that variable up. So I'll go into the set variable and say the variable to update is that new variable that we just created called out args. And the value that's going to be updated is the activity JSON path query, JSON path query args. And that way it sets the variable to those args and makes it an output. Now what I'll do is validate it. And here's where the interesting part comes in. I can now click is atomic workflow and give it a group name and we'll set a new group name under under postman so what we'll do is we'll say postman here and i'll say create postman you actually have to click it here so don't just hit enter you have to say create postman and what's really cool about this is when you validate it again you can't click run anymore so what does that mean that means now when i create a new workflow I have a new category over here on this side called Postman, and I could drag Postman Echo into a workflow. And now it just asks me for the args here in the workflow. Notice it's not prompting the user anymore because it's atomic action, and it's actually asking you for those variables within the workflow you wanted to create. So now you created a reusable object called Postman Echo, and what we did is we just specified the arguments now that it's prompting for from that um, atomic action you just created. So now you can do the same thing where we validate it. Oh, whoops, I got to give it a username. So let's give a username for the, for the workflow and we'll call it Postman Echo. And I'll validate it. And I'll run it. And guess what? I'll get those same values back, but I don't have to create those over and over and over again. What I do is I just reuse that same object. And now you've created your first atomic action that actually does something for you. So it created a reusable object, and you can see it says one and two here, and you were able to create something that's now reusable. And you could do that for anything. So think about anything that you want to use. If you know the API, you can connect to it and create those objects for use. The other thing to note is that anything on the left-hand side here can become reusable into atomic action. So you can create whole workflows that become reusable pieces to use within your um, within your workflows. So that's it for workflows right now. We'll get into some more advanced um, for the more advanced examples in future tutorials.